My name is Pixie McKenna. I'm a GP, doctor presenter on Channel 4's Embarrassing Bodies. So I'm very used to talking about things that probably make most of us blush. But again, like most of you in the room who've had to go through the experience of going for a smear, I personally don't like it. You know, most women don't like having smear tests. And Gynae Health UK did a survey of 3,500 women. And what they found was that a lot of them aren't turning up for appointments. They're simply not going. Now, that, of course, is a foolish thing to do. But then if your option is a test which is uncomfortable, embarrassing, and also something that you have to elect a little bit of time in your diary for because you have to do it at a certain time of the month, you can kind of see why people don't turn up. Extrapolating the one third of people in the survey who weren't turning up, that's one third of 3,500 women, there are an estimated probably five women in the UK who are deferring their smear test. They're just simply putting it off, they're not going. And on average, they're about 700 days late. Now, that's not fashionably late, ladies. <laughs> that's foolishly late, I think. So, who has heard of HPV? 50, 70% of you? Well, you know about it. <laughs> and it, what's your understanding of HPV? No, so I've heard of it, but I'm honestly, I'm racking my brain so I can't. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking like a virus for some reason. Yeah. Like an HPV virus, but that's the virus. Yeah, no, that's right, absolutely. And do you know what it stands for? Does anyone know what HPV stands for? Yeah, human papilloma virus, that's right. Something like that. Yeah, that's right. Well done. Well done. Um, anyone know anything about it? Or is there anyone in the room that's never heard of HPV? Yeah, until you got here. Really? Okay, that's good. Well, you're definitely going to leave here and you're going to know something. That's a very useful, useful thing for you to know. Um, the HPV virus is incredibly common. By the time you reach 25, um, and you're, if you're sexually active, there's at least a 50% chance that you have come in contact with the HPV virus. And by the time you're 50, there's an 80% chance. So actually, this is relevant to everyone. Um, there are over 100 types of HPV. We know that 40 types affect the genitals. And of those, we know that there are specific high-risk types that are directly involved in cervical cancer. Does anyone know the main cause of cervical cancer? HPV. Correct. 99.7% of cervical cancer is caused by HPV. So it's really, really important. So if you didn't know about it before today, you need to know about it. It's vitally important. Um, we diagnose 3,000 cervical cancers a year. So on average, about eight people a day, and we're having three people a day die in the UK of cervical cancer. Now, if you think about it as a virus, and it's a virus that we can screen for, then actually we could really change those statistics if we looked at it a bit more broadly. Um, and in Britain today, despite the fact that people are still dying of cervical cancer, one million women just don't go for smears. They just don't go, bury their head in the sand, and they never go. And, yeah, and those are the women, unfortunately, that get the bad results. Um, what happens with the results? Because that's the most important part. And for me, as a doctor, I think it's very, very important. If you're going to do a test, you always got to anticipate what you do if you get a positive result. This is, we're not saying that people shouldn't go for their smear tests. What we're saying is this is a test for someone who may not like going for their smear test or might want to know their HPV status. Have they got HPV or not? Do they carry it? Um, important, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but as I said, probably half of the people in this room, if not more, have already had exposure to HPV. The vast majority of you will have got rid of it and it will never cause you any mischief. It's only a small amount of people who retain HPV within their bodies and of those, it's only a very, very tiny amount of people who have trouble in terms of abnormal cells or go on to develop cancers later on in life. Usually, you'll get rid of HPV within about two years in the vast majority of people.
So if you do this test and you get a positive result, now positive in medical circles means bad, okay? We, because we like to make everything obscure, a positive result for doctors is an abnormal result. So if you get an abnormal result that identifies that you've got HPV, then you will be called by the company and they will explain what you do and the process in terms of you going back to your GP or you gaining access to a gynecologist. So you won't be left at home with a result on a bit of paper saying, oh gee, what do I have to do? If you have a clear result, then that's very reassuring. It means you're clear of the high risk strains of HPV and you would be advised to retest again in two years time. Okay, has anyone got any questions on that? Do you get a letter saying you're clear? Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. This isn't a no news is good, no, yeah. This isn't a no news is good news. Uh, this is everyone will get a result. And if you give the information for your GP, then your GP will also get a copy of a result. I always think that people should copy their GPs into everything because actually your portal of records that you have from cradle to grave will always remain within the NHS. And if you're like me and you have bits of paper here and you have five handbags on the go, actually putting all the information together, I think is, is very, very useful. Your GP isn't going to catastrophize you for having an extra test or having something else. It's just an additional piece of information that could be useful in a clinical setting.